Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. On today's show, we have former television host Sam Shack on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. Hit the open road with a truckload of cash free play in one of three luxury travel trailers during the $250,000 Travel Time Giveaways. Thousands in weekly giveaways plus $7,500 in grand prizes guaranteed. And a new travel trailer or $35,000. Now at the Carson Valley Inn. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. Gear up for the 105th Reno Rodeo at the Double R Marketplace and experience the biggest little shopping adventure in the West. With over 100 vendors, you'll find everything from Western attire to home decor to tasty treats. Open every day during the Reno Rodeo at the Livestock Event Center Indoor Arena in South Exhibit Hall. The Double R Marketplace, Thursday, June 20th through Saturday, June 29th. Plus, shop online anytime at renorodeo.com for Reno Rodeo merchandise. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host George Harris on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is George Harris. And welcome back to another edition of Nevada Newsmakers. I'm your host, George Harris. Today's guest is none other than the Nevadan, the most famous man in Nevada, Sam Shad. Sam, welcome to our show. Well, thank you very much for having me on my own show. Oh, well, it's not your show anymore. It's Apparently my show. not. Okay. Your company fired you and hired me. I told you. I told you you were, you were going to be concerned. So, Sam, before we get started, let me ask you a question. Um, have you now or ever been a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> no, but no, I love... No, seriously, seriously, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love Mel Brooks movies. I, we, we should explain. Uh, yes, go Just uh, briefly. briefly. That the show is now, we're in our 22nd year. And so a lot of people have said to me that they would like to hear more about me and what's gone on in the show. And you were the first person to actually ask that. And so I reluctantly agreed to let you take over the show. Well, but that's, that's, that's sort of not the way I heard it. I heard that you were fired <laughs> and they offered me a contract. <laughs> and I said, yes. And I said, but I control everything. And they go, absolutely. I said, Sam Shad's going to be my first guest. All right. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here. What would you like to know? So, Sam, I would like to know a lot of stuff. First of all, a lot of people really don't know how you think. And, uh, and you know, I think you're this far left liberal nutcase. And apparently you may not be. But let's talk about... Let's talk about what's happening now to Nevadans. Let's actually take a few minutes to be serious. Sam, gas is going to hit $5 a gallon probably by June 5th. That's what, that's what they're estimating. How do, you think that, how do you think that affects everyday Nevadans? Oh, I think it's terrible for everyday Nevadans. I mean, obviously the economy uh, is a disaster uh, for most people. Even people who have money are looking at the pricing in the grocery store um, and interest rates and things like that and uh, are not happy with the situation. So I, I, I think it's affecting everybody, whether you're a corporation or whether you're an individual, in a very bad way. So which leads us in our next question. You know, if you talk to any politician, every politician, they're, they're hawkward to me. It's, well, we must have affordable housing, affordable housing. And then as a businessman, I go in and I try to explain to them, do you understand what affordable housing is? Do you understand the only way you can get to affordable housing, which in Clark County and Washoe County, 
is probably an impossibility because you have all these REITs and all these, all these big uh, uh, investment groups that during the crash bought literally thousands of homes. Sam. Yes, uh, Blackstone Se bought 6,000 homes yeah, but in Las like, Vegas. It's like 70,000 homes statewide are owned, owned by these people. And I think the average rent, which is I find disgusting, is, is the average rent is like $1,600 a month. So in, in able to get affordable housing, you have to have a marketplace where you can get affordable rents. So there's a lot of BLM land in the state, and there's a lot of county and city land. And I think there's a lot of developers that would step up to the plate if the county and the city and the BLM released the land to them at no cost, ensuring that when the homes were built, that the developer would get a fair profit, but that these homes could be built at a reasonable price of, I think the sweet spot would be somewhere around anywhere from 200 to 250,000 bucks. All right, so, so I think you have to open this up to a bigger picture, which is lands bills. And our delegation has been trying to get a lands bill for several years. There's a Clark County lands bill. There's uh, lands bills all across northern Nevada, the Washoe County lands bill, et cetera. And until a lands bill is passed, uh, you're not going to have access to that BLM land or any other land. And with the shortage of land, it's going to mean that the cost for building on the available land is going to be higher. It's a question of basic economics. And so that's really what's going to happen. And in conversations, especially with uh, Congressman Amade over the last few years, there are issues with people who have a problem with Nevada, uh, going back to Harry Reid, um, and on those committees that, that deal with you know, lands bills, we have an issue there that needs to be resolved and it's not being resolved. So I don't think it's gonna happen in this Congress, and we'll see if there's any chance for it to happen in the next Congress. But as long as the people are in place on those committees as supporters of those committees, and I'm, I mean, as workers you know, super, being part of that committee, that we're not gonna see a lands bill. And plus, DC doesn't really have any knowledge of what goes on in the West. So they don't realize that the Western states have so much BLM land and you know, uh, fish and wildlife land, I mean. Well, they don't, they don't realize, and, they, and frankly, they don't care. But our job, my job here as the host, and your job as the guest is, you know, we together, I'm a Republican. We don't know what you are, Sam. <laughs> I, I tell people you're an alien, but, you know. <laughs> only, only because of the Our tequila. goal should be to, to set an agenda out for a lot of these politicians to care about basic Nevadans. You know, I'm, I'm a Republican. Let's say you're a Democrat. You know, I, Which I'm not. I, I know. But look, a lot of Democrat friends of mine, I, I know they really care, okay? They just have no business sense and they don't know how to get to, from point A to point B. And they want to block everything because they want their thumbprint on it. And I think it's time that we take our thumbprint off stuff and have everybody work together. Just like with this lands bill stuff, you say there's a problem. I say go get a piece of cheese, don't go for the whole steak. Meaning that, look, you guys, BLM owns X amount of property in all the urban areas in the state. That's not right. That's not a Bureau of Land Management thing. These are urban areas. Turn all the urban property over to the cities and the counties and let them then turn around and distribute it so we can build some affordable housing. Well, Clark County had that opportunity. Um, they were given a, a small chunk of land and they turned it down because they wanted the bigger picture. So, I mean, th that offer was on the table um, and it was rejected. And I, I understand that they wanted to get a much bigger package. And, and I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I mean, I think the lands bills are the answer to so much, not only in housing and affordable housing um, and getting rid of these islands within the cities, um, but also for economic development. There are major in, in industrial parks that are ready to go in northern Nevada with thousands of acres of developable land with water, and they're not able to go because of the checkerboarding with the railroad and the ownership by the government of those lands. So I, there's no disagreement for me on that whatsoever. Well, you know, there's the old saying, Sam, if you don't grow, you die. Right. And a lot of people, we have anti-growth people, you have that, but they, you have to be mature enough to understand this is a great state. It's probably the greatest state in the union, okay? Uh, no, no disagreement from and me. And we have to take care of Nevadans first. 
You know, everybody says uh, America first. I say America first too, but I also say Nevada's first. Um, we have a great state here, and we are being influenced by sources from California, sources from Arizona, and sources from back east that come here, and they just go, oh, well, wasn't that bad in California where I came from? And they vote for the most crazy stuff. And, you know, that's my, my agenda is let's make sure everybody can get a piece of the pie. And that's, that's how I've lived my whole life. Well, I, I look, I, I, I'm somebody who was born in England and became a United States citizen. And, uh, and so, you know, this is the land of opportunity. And Nevada is a wonderful state where as hard as you want to work is as successful as you want to be. And um, I, I've got no argument with you there. But one of the things that I think plays into this is that political campaign advertising is all negative. It's like, you're no good, no, you're no good, no, you're worse, no, you're worse. And it's like little kids fighting. And, you know, the other side of my business, as you know, is an advertising agency. And I would never advertise a company saying, don't go to Harry's Bakery. Harry's Bakery makes terrible bread. And don't go to Shirley's Bakery. They make terrible bread. Come to my bakery. I make the best bread. Well, who's going to come to my bakery? Because they're going to think I'm a jerk. Well, the political discussion as far as the commercials go, is, the is, is on a childlike level. And we need to have marketing and advertising that is not in the way that we've been doing campaigns, but in a way of what can we do for you, Mr. Voter, Mrs. Voter, rather than I hate you, I hate you, I hate. it's terrible. And, it, and you know, it, it's making it within families. I mean, it used to be Uncle Joe at Thanksgiving uh, would go off the rails after a couple of cocktails. Now, half the family doesn't want to talk to the other half of the family because one side is Republican, one side is Democrat, and they can't meet in the middle. It's a terrible situation. Sam, it is, but for me, I got to be honest with you, the holiday season is the greatest thing in the world for me because I just walk into the room immediately and I, and I know everybody how they think and I just do everything, I throw every kind of bomb I can to piss them all off because then I don't have to buy a bunch of Christmas presents. <laughs> so for me, it's a tactical business move. <laughs> all right, very good. <laughs> I think it's time for you to uh, Okay, take so break. we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with Sam Shad. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you. Safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators. From the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Turn your clunker into a caddy during the Cadillac and Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Weekly cash drawings including 5,000 cash and one top prize of $10,000. Win the grand prize of a Cadillac CT4 or 40,000 in cash. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm your host, George Harris. Our guest today is Sam Shad, the famous Sam Shad. So Sam, let's just take a few seconds to talk about you. Okay. You've been doing this show since, well, I remember the first time I met you, I asked you what kind of ammunition you used in the War of 1812. <laughs> so it's been a long time. <laughs> Let's just face that. Um, what do you see yourself doing five years from now? Are you still going to be doing thing? this? Oh, absolutely. As long as my health holds up, 
Um, I plan on doing exactly what I'm doing because I have the most incredible life. I get to interview normally when I have a show. Uh, the smartest people in Nevada and the smartest people that come through the state. Um, I'm I just don't want you to be angry that they fired you. <laughs> it, I just took the job. They no, fired you. I said I'll do it. If I get it back. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm lucky that nobody tells me who to book. I can book anybody I want. I can ask any questions I want. There is no producer telling me, you can ask this, but you can't ask that. And that's an incredible freedom in the broadcasting world. The other side of my business is an advertising agency. Some clients that you know, friends of mine, I've had, in one case, 34 years has been a client. Another is 21 years. And these people have become my friends over the years. So I have a really amazing life in the public life. If I would stop doing this, what would I do? I'd want to talk to people, and I want to be with my friends, and that's what I get to do. So looking at you from 30,000 feet, one of the reasons I love you so much is that you see immediately integrity, long-term relationships, which means you're honest, and, and you do things the right way. So, you know, Thank it's you. always, a lot of people would like to know, you know, and I know you're guarded once in a while, you know, about, about who you are, what you are, but, uh, and where you are, but it's, it's, it's good to, I like this little camaraderie, but now we're going we're gonna to switch it up and we're going to talk a little about politics. And I want to talk about the U.S. Senate race in Nevada. Okay. And the reason I want to talk about the U.S. Senate race is because I think if someone could make a boneheaded move and just cripple their campaign, I, I unfortunately think Sam Brown has done that by his verbalization and support of the Yucca Mountain Project, who, by the way, I read a white paper from a very entrenched, well-known uh, economist that said if Nevada does take nuclear waste without a, a really strong plan to tra to tra that it'll it'll just capsize property values statewide, not in the area, statewide. What is your opinion on that? Okay, so let me. You know, I love Tim Russert. Yes. Um, when he hosted Meet the Press and when he would go on shows, um, I so admired him because A, I never knew what his political base was, and number two, whatever angle he was asked a question, so if he was asked from a Republican point of view or a Democratic point of view, he would answer the question and then open it up to the other side, so you got a broader picture. So let me open up this and say that Yucca Mountain and I know there are certain people are going to get mad at me for this, but Yucca Mountain is, is so done. There is nothing there at this point. It would take decades to put Yucca Mountain back into place, and it's not going to happen. And so it's a red herring um, in this particular campaign. I, I, you know, the average Nevadan, first of all, has no clue what a Yucca Mountain is. They may know about the Yucca plant and buy it at the grocery store, but they don't know what Yucca Mountain is. It's decades ago. It's been dead for decades. And I think that in a political campaign, it's a momentary thing, a flash in the pan. And I'm not talking in so favor then, or against so then, any of the candidates. So then this, I'm not telling you before. It's I'm just a saying, red herring. So then this is, is a good assessment for you to answer. I agree with everything you just said. So I'm questioning, I've been questioning myself since I saw him you know, open his arms to nuclear. Why would he do it? It's just stupid. It's just absurd. I mean, Yucca Mountain is 20 years old. It isn't going to happen. I agree with you. So why would a, a man running for United States Senate today, out of every issue you could talk about, raise his hand and say, hey, let's talk about we need to bring nuclear waste to Nevada? I think that uh, campaigns are run by consultants in conjunction with the candidates. They do research on the state and they see what the issues have been over the years and they come up with what in their minds may be the appropriate issues and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong. Um, there is plenty of time before the election and before the primary in fact uh, to correct any perceived errors but in this particular case I just think it's such a red herring because so many tens of thousands of people have moved to Nevada since Yucca Mountain was an issue right. that they don't know what it is, they don't care what it is. As we spoke about earlier, 
they care about the price of bacon, the price of eggs, the price Maybe of that's why they're doing it, because they don't want to talk about what's facing us, which is the next great segue. Sam, we talked about gasoline. We talked about housing. Now, um, you know, I don't know, and I don't want you to answer whether you like Trump or dislike Trump, but Trump has done something genius the last couple of weeks. He's going into small little towns and taking over the grocery stores for a day, and they're rolling the prices back to 2012. And for five or six hours, these people go in and shop, and, and Trump pays a difference to, the, to the, the owner. But that is, I think, a tactically brilliant political move. So when people are in the store, they go shopping, they're getting prices at 2012, and as they're leaving the store, they say, this is what happens if you elect Trump these prices are gonna go back to 2012. I think it's a brilliant move. I don't think there's any argument that Donald Trump has been a master manipulator of media going back 30 plus years. I remember staying at uh, my daughter's house in Hawaii and they had this uh, streaming service. They didn't have regular TV. So I was flipping through the channels and I found an interview between Donald Trump and, um, and uh, gosh, uh, the comedian who had a talk show. I'm Jay Leno. No, no, I'm, I'm spaced on it. We only have 30 minutes. No, no, this I know. why you got fired. Just, just, just put it on I think now, pause. they think you got some time. Uh, Joan, Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Yeah, okay. so, I, I, so I'll, just start, I'll just start okay. the answer again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm at my daughter's house in Hawaii, and we're watching the streaming channel, and there's an interview with Joan Rivers and Donald Trump from 30 years ago. And what was amazing was that all the opinions he has today, he had 30 years ago. People think that a lot of this stuff is new. It's not. He's believed these things forever. And he and Joan Rivers were a good match because they both hated the media, because the media bullied them both in New York. Um, so I think that Donald Trump has been a master of the media. And you know, despite all the problems that he's faced, he has managed to capture the imagination of half of this country, the other half is not in support of him. We'll see what happens in the election. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I can absolutely see four more years with Donald Trump and I can also see four more years with Joe Biden. And I just think that at some point in the future we need to get younger candidates, maybe people in their 50s and 60s rather than people in their 70s and 80s. Okay, I think we have about 35 minutes left. So I will, uh, I'll ask you a few, you know, lightning bolt questions. Okay, can we take a break? And uh, you know what? I need to get a beer, and then I'll be right back. I'm the host here. I'll decide <laughs> when we take a break. But no. So we'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers. More with Sam Shad. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Hey, welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm your host, George Harris. With us today, is the incredible Sam Shad. Thank you, sir. Sam, thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully you can get you, I don't think they're gonna give your job back, but hopefully they do. We'll see so what Sam, happens. Let's talk about a couple things down here in Clark, and then I'll let you follow up with Washoe, because we only got about two minutes, and let's end off with Elko. 
Okay. Clark County, real quick, boom, the A's are probably not coming to Las Vegas. Well, I mean, that, that's floating around, but I, I, I don't think that that's likely. I think there's uh, too much money has been committed by the state and uh, also by Bally's and GLP, the uh, company that actually owns the land there. And I think that they'll work it out and it'll actually happen. Northern Nevada, Washoe County, all that area, water crisis is officially over. Right. Well, you know and how that works. And they say that they want to build 150,000 plus new homes. Take it away. We need 5,000 new homes a year for the next 10 years. That was put out by EDON a couple of years ago. Um, and it's absolutely true. Not only do you have the growth from the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, one of our fine sponsors, uh, but you also have the natural growth of families growing up, kids needing to get housing and staying in their community. So, no, absolutely. Um, I don't think it's dependent on uh, Lake Tahoe being full. That's kind of the state climatologist, when I was a weatherman, told me years ago that the drought is over when Lake Tahoe is full. Lake Tahoe will be full this year, and so we're good. Uh, Tamwa, the water provider up north, um, has 11 years of drought reserves, so that's really not an issue. Good news. Now, let's talk about right in the state before we get to Elko. Real quick, we don't have much Very time. Very quickly. We have a nice little place called Winnemucca. Yes, sir. And Winnemucca has what's, what's said by the Chinese, the largest deposit of lithium in the world. Up at Thacker okay. Pass, yes. How do we get the tree huggers to understand the only way you grow is without dying? And Okay, can I answer real quick? You can answer. Out of time? Um, the president has made it uh, his mission to get these critical minerals. Uh, they've made everything possible for Thacker Pass, and these lawsuits are being tossed aside. Uh, and Catherine Cortez Masto also uh, enabled the legislation that allows the uh, removal of waste uh, mining materials to go on to public lands. That fight is over. Okay, so thank you for coming on and say bye bye. Till next time, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this version of Nevada Newsmakers. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together, we can grow it forward. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching this special edition of Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in Las Vegas. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 7 on nevadanewsmakers.com, or you can download our podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you on the next broadcast.